as we direct your attention to the first chapter of that great book of Romans, I read in verse 8 Paul's words. He says, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, because your faith is being proclaimed throughout the whole world. You know, you can just live in one place at one time. But you know, as God, you allow God to do a work in your life. God, as he was doing here in the church at Rome, he can cause that influence to go way beyond you. The, um, you know, without embarrassing the dear individual who's largely responsible for me putting these tapes together. Um, I think when I was preaching on that verse, I mentioned your name, Nathan, uh, that God, I think, has, has used you in a, in a, in a tremendous way. Uh, and your faith has gone way beyond, in a sense, one geographical. You know, God can do that in each one of us. The, uh, this, I thank my God. You know, as you look at Paul's writings, you compare that with any other writings of his day, you'll find the emphasis upon thanksgiving is absolutely unparalleled in Paul's writings. It is one great evidence of the Spirit of God's work in our life. Uh, it's one great evidence of being controlled by the Spirit. The Spirit of God can enable us to be grateful for things we've taken for granted all our life. Now, so you say, what really is the key to developing a grateful heart? Well, I think it's this. As we look at these beginning chapters in the book of Romans, uh, you'll find, as we go through that great section from 118 to 320, it'll talk about the universal need of man, that I stand in need of His grace. I've earned His judgment. You see, if I were getting what I deserve today, where would I be? Now, you'd be there too, but where would I be? I would be in torment if I were getting what I deserve today. I would be in hell. I don't know how much I fully emotionally understand that, but I know it's true. Now, anything I ever receive in life other than that is due to the grace of God. To the degree that you and I understand that, to that degree, we can develop a grateful heart. Every kindness, every mouthful of food, every pleasant experience, every comfort is due to the grace of God. You know, I find a tremendous help um, to me is, uh, is to review a day in my mind, and I'll jot down certain key things of it in a very unburdensome way. But I think of the James 1.17. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. What are the good and perfect gifts of this day? I think of, you know, yesterday, I, as I awakened, I wasn't feeling very well. And Lord, I didn't know how I was going to make it through that day. I had a radio uh, appointment that I, I had a couple of exit interviews with students. I had a three-hour class. I had a meeting. And you know, somehow... God not only got me through that day, I felt much better at the end of the day than I did. That, that health was what? A gift of God. Maybe most of us just, we just, I have sometimes just assumed, okay, I'm supposed to be in good health. Uh, but it's a gift of God. It's a gift of God. Every good and perfect gift is a gift of God. So that's the key to developing a grateful heart. And even be cautious, some of his good gifts may come in some strange packages. You know, it's not often you'll have somebody, maybe you've heard me say this, that at a prayer meeting say, God, would you give me the good gift of loneliness tonight? Well, see, if loneliness causes you to cultivate the fellowship with God, it's a good gift. The, develop, the key to developing a grateful heart is understanding, okay, you know, I've earned judgment. Anything God gives me other than that is due to the grace of God.